Gordon himself, during an interview on, uh, at, on if, if you read around, I saw one of his interviews on, on the internet, he said that the real Twin Galaxies in Bill Mitchell is much darker than, it, than his documentary portrayed him, and the, the truth is, that's absolute truth. But I know as much as he does. When you say darker, what, what do you mean? mean more dishonest, you know, more deceptive, you know, more bias, you know, the negative things that to keep we, Steve Weeby down. They really have a guy that sits there and watches VHS tapes? Or oh, that guy, Robert Mirza? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the real him, as far as I know. I mean, <laughs> Jeez. so as he's. He's posting on the Twin Galaxies website right now, Robert Merzak. He was a few months ago, and then I and then somebody had put up a, a, a had a, had made the accusation that Robert Merzak had paid for the new Twin Galaxies website, and then right after that, instead of putting his name on his post, he put RTM. <laughs> so you you can draw whatever conclusion you think is is appropriate. In my opinion. I mean, I can't say for sure, I don't know, but it, I, I bet my life and wouldn't even blink that Robert Merzak's the real owner of Twin Galaxies. So, I mean, that's just a guess. I mean, I know they probably, I'm being filmed by hidden cameras right now. I mean, Robert Merzak's got two or three people in here, I don't know who they are, <laughs> taking notes, watching him, you know. He's a, he blames me for everything. I, I mean, don't blame me. I don't know. So we'll see. I, I heard we're, they're working on a documentary that's going to slam me, so I should, it should be pretty interesting. So um, you have many there's no such thing as negative publicity, so I'll just uh, I'll just make the use of I'll make good use of it when it comes out. <laughs> you have been consulted with that at all with any new documentaries? Well, I've got some good ideas of what's going on. I mean, I'm, I'm not I'm not a fool. I mean, there's all kinds of. I got some guy calling me up in, in, in the middle of the night asking me about missile command. He's, and I, he's like tape recording me and stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy, yeah. I mean, seriously. So, and they even went after that guy Jeff Blair too because uh, Jeff Blair had played on the slow cursor and, and he plays the same as I did. So they're trying to, you know, it's just like. Jeff Blair was upset because they would they wouldn't split the settings either, and they were saying that I was cheating, and they, and then how could they say he was cheating too? He lives in Maine, you know. It's like he's they're trying to say that he cheated also, so they didn't have to put his score up, so Tony Temple could stay above everybody else. I don't know what this deal is on that one. What happened was Tony Temple's score never should have been printed in the first place because he plays on the wrong setting theoretically, but Robert Merzak had lied to the Guinness guys and said he played on the slow cursor to get it printed. And then later he confessed, that he, I don't know what, what he confessed later or how they sorted it out, but that score should have never been. Was uh, the, this other setting, was it ever released in the arcades or was it like a... I'm, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was out there in, in some arcades. Roy, can I help with this? Go ahead, go ahead. I did a lot of research on this. Uh, Roy explained it, but he may not have explained it perfectly or very clear. The slow cursor settings on the big four-inch trackball was for the upright machine, which is the way it's supposed to be played. Right. The fast tip switch setting is only for the cocktail tables. The cocktail tables have the smaller two and a half inch trackball. If you take the two and a half inch trackball and put it on the fast cursor setting, the game plays the same as a four-inch trackball and upright. So that's what it's for, and that's the only reason it's for. And that's why I agree with him that you shouldn't play on the fast cursor settings with the slow trackball because it gives you an advantage. All right. Yeah, much more. But yeah, there are there see. are upright missile command machines that have a 2.5 inch trackball. I mean, they're smaller ones. I've, I've seen, seen them. Cabaret. <laughs> yeah, cabarets. Yeah, cabarets. They do. That's that's how the manuals got mixed up because in the in the first manuals that came out, they had on and off in the same manual on for the four inch trackball, the on is the slow cursor for the four inch trackball, then off the fast cursor for the 2.5 inch trackball. It was specifically stated in the, in the initial manuals that came out. And then as the missile <laughs> command game became very popular, they decided to split the manuals and send like a separate manual just on for, for each individual setting and they got confused and that's where they mixed it up. So some manuals, like for, well, 
upright missile command, most people just normally assume it's the four inch trackball, but there's also a 2.5 inch, and that's probably some underpaid individual who's typing up the manuals made the mistake. Excuse me. What? Um, I was wondering, with the prevalence of uh, missile command in the time of the um, Red Scare, the fear of nuclear holocaust, did it ever prove scary, chilling at any bad time? Like, oh no, this could happen to me. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, when they when they had they actually used missile command as an icon in that Terminator 2 movie, and you see that's where you might it might scare you. You know, there's a computer that actually starts to evolve to the point where he thinks like a human being and then wants to get rid of anybody that's a he thinks. I, I don't know. They, talk to James Cameron. Maybe he gets. <laughs> Five minutes left. All right. Are you going to play? Today? Yeah. No. I haven't played for a long time. When was the last time you played? Probably three, four years ago. I don't even know. Probably even one up. What? At the one up. Well, I played. Oh, I mean, like. You played at the one up? I could play it right now, but I'm not going to get any decent score. I, I mean, you got to practice really well. He did well. amazing. He's, he's, he's really being humble. humble. He's what were you amazing. doing at the one up? Was that My guess is that footage is going to end up in Robert Murzak's documentary with some kind of BS about <laughs> it. <laughs> so when it does, I don't, seriously. You find yourself uh, playing any other games? What? In your life. I mean, obviously video game expert, so what else do you play? I don't play much anything else. I just played that during college, that's it. And when I graduated from college, and I hadn't played video games for years and years. And then suddenly, thanks to Walter Day printing those miss, those uh, egregious. egregious errors in his book, <laughs> then I'll, I was forced to replay it because I couldn't prove what cursor setting I played on. Yes. So. I felt compelled to replay it, and then as I was real, and then I real, I'm glad I did because now I got the, the points at 100 round score. It's definitely, a, a, in my opinion, a better score than the one I played back in 1985. Because I've got some new, I've developed, you know, I've been working on some point pressing techniques, and, you know, as I played. I've been playing from like <coughs> 2004 to 2008, and I was, and I, and in 2009, and that's basically I haven't played. I haven't played since 2009, so it's been five years since the last time I really played. Wow. I played on this machine when they had it there because Bill Carlton wanted me to go up and play it. He go to me and he said it's on the it's on the fast cursor or something like that. I can't remember. I, he just wanted me to roll it. He kept goading. I said, okay, I'll go up and roll it just for you, you know. So then this guy had this camera in there, and it's pr probably like, God only knows what they're gonna make out of it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? Was that you with the camera? I saw somebody else. It was some other guy. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe there's more than one. Don't worry. I'm not going to jump with that. Nah, it's alright. <laughs> <laughs> Where can we get your copy? Oh, I'm going to re-release re it when the time is right. When the uh, when the <laughs> when the crap hits the fan again. But you got a new one coming or something, don't you? Well, number two. Yeah, I'm working on that one too. I was, I, I, I'm, I'm going to release some of them to, in, at, at Comic-Con down in San Diego, and then uh, probably some more later. Just a prototype. You have a table at Comic-Con? No. no. I'm just a celebrity, uh, professional celebrity guest there. <laughs> <laughs> when you were playing in college, did it seem like most of them were on the heavy, slow, hard to move? Track ball, or were were there also the the speedy small ones too? Or well, most of them were on on the correct setting, you know, the four inch track ball and the slow cursor. But every once in a while, I probably run I ran across one that was set on the fast cursor. Because I played so many, so many of them. So I'm pretty terrible at missile command, but I did notice the difference of it's much heavier and slower to move and harder, you know, more skilled than the fast. Especially the one. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I played on it just yeah. when I came in. Earlier? Yeah, 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 I played a game. Well, not I played for like 100,000 and then I clicked my finger inside the track block. <laughs> what setting is that one on? It's on the slow curse, four inch track ball. It's There's something wrong with the machine because it's got like the ghost in the back and when it goes to that really light blue screen, you can't even see the, you can't see the, uh, the marksman X to shoot the missiles. It's like you're, you're like completely blind for two screens. And that's when I walked away from the game. I could probably roll it now on, on 10,000 bonus easily, even if I haven't played for years.
But to get back to where I was, considering my age, I mean, I can only make a guess at how well I could do if I wanted to play again. But I'm, you know, I'm not going to spend two hours a day playing this. I mean, I mean, that's what you have to do. I mean, if you if somebody would, if somebody goaded me into playing, like if somebody would put a hundred thousand dollars in an escrow account and want me to replay the scores, <laughs> based on, based on uh, if I get the record, then they release me the money, something like that. So we put it on Kickstarter for you. <laughs> <laughs> Then, then I then I want to play some missile command. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's it. I think my time is up. Uh, if anyone has something they needed to say, you know, since there's a little, little bit of controversial opinions, I just want to make sure if anyone had some counterpoint they wanted to make, their opportunity is offered. Uh, obviously, the, the opinions of the speakers are their own, not California Extreme, yada, yada, yada. Uh, you know, we, we, we think that whoever wants to declare themselves to be an official arbiter of something, they're welcome to do that, and people are well, welcome to honor it or not. I'm a big arbiter, but I've seen Boyd play Texas to 100, to 100 boards, and it's very impressive. I mean, over half a million points yeah. without losing He's a one of the guys. I, I don't think anyone disputes that Roy is a it, tremendous player. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was here. I was here in, in pretty much top shape at, in, in California Extreme in 2005. So unfortunately, we, I didn't have the, uh, the publicity of King of Kong at that time. So Twin Galaxies knew I was here. The Twin Galaxies guys were here. I filmed the the, la the last two thirds of the score. You know, and so I, you know, I can play. <laughs> All right. All right. Man. Uh,